How many times have you come over the rest and be thankful, looked up at those crags and thought, I wonder what it's like up there? Well, today you're going to find out because we're going to climb Ben and Lochan. Now, Ben and Lochan is a mountain close to the A83. That's the road that links Arachar with the uh, Loch Fine and Inverary. It's 2,956 feet. It was once thought to be a Monroe, but uh, with more refined surveying techniques, it was found that poor Ben and Lochan just falls below the magic 3,000 feet. Now you're probably getting quite impatient now to see the glacial features I was mentioning earlier. But uh, before we do that, let's have a look at uh, Ben and Lochan's big brother, Ben Eam behind me. What we see there is a Monroe. It's uh, over 3,300 feet. And it has an outlier. The hill that you see to the left, that's Ben Chorinach. And the low ground you see between the two is sometimes referred to as a call or a saddle, and quite often the Gaelic name is used, a bialach, which sometimes just simply means a pass. Now, some mountains have what they call a bad step, and um, very often it's just maybe a big slab that you have to jump across, or in some cases quite a scary crag to negotiate. Now, Ben and Lochan's not a particularly difficult mountain, but it does have something of a, a bad step here. But uh, it's so simple. I mean, if you, if you can't negotiate a thing like this, then you may as well pack in. You shouldn't really be on this mountain at all. Uh, so let's give it a go. Let's see, here's that hold. Can we just try Ben Lomond? No. Right. Okay, now for some mountain name dropping. The hill you see there is the highest of the Arachar Alps, Ben Eam, at 3,318 feet. Ben Eam means Butter Hill, or Butter Mountain of all things. The smaller hill to the left and further back is Ben Vane, 3,004 feet. This means the middle hill. To the southwest of Ben Eam lies Ben Donich, meaning the evil mountain, at 2,777 feet. Not a Monroe, but a great hill to climb with marvellous views towards Loch Fine and beyond. Hell's Glen lies not far away from this hill, and why the association with evil and hell in this area? Very strange indeed. Right, it's time now to do that bit of a detective work I mentioned earlier, looking for evidence of past glaciation. The valley behind me is in fact Upper Glen Kinglas, and there are several features to note. One, first of all, is the over steepened valley sides uh, caused by glaciers eroding that valley and occupying almost all of the valley. The part that the glacier possibly didn't occupy is evidenced by the flat shoulders that you can see at a higher level. Now, one flat shoulder is called an alp, and there's very often one on the other side, so the two together would be referred to as alpin. They actually are remnants of the former river valley and provide some idea as to how much erosion has taken place by the glacier. So the amount of rock material removed can be seen by the distance between the Alpen 
and the present valley floor. Now, all of this glaciation took place uh, at its maximum anyway, about 18,000 years before the present. Now, it's important to realise that the river you see there is not the agent of erosion. The river in that glen there is far too small to have cut out that valley. So it's obviously been something much more enormous, a glacier in fact. And the way the glacier erodes the valley is, to, is by a scouring action, by glacial plucking. That's where the glacier is fixed into the valley, perhaps melts slightly during the summer, and then in the winter refreezes and begins to move forward and pluck pieces of rock from the valley side. So in that way it scours the valley and erodes it down to the level you see today. Still more evidence of glaciation. Ahead of us here, the summit of Benin Lochen, and it actually takes the form of a pyramidal peak, sometimes called a horn peak. Incidentally, the Matterhorn in Switzerland is the classic example of a pyramidal or horn peak. Now, what actually caused this particular shape, this distinctive pyramid shape? Well, uh, it is alleged <laughs> that it was actually caused by glaciers flowing off in various directions. One glacier flowing down this way, more or less in our direction, another glacier flowing down the other way, towards my left here, and perhaps another one flowing down the other side. So that what was originally perhaps a fairly rounded mountain would gradually become more of that type of shape. So there you have it, a pyramidal peak. Not a lot of people know that, by the way. Well, here we are at the summit of Berenlochen at 2,956 feet, or 901 metres. Now, mountains in Scotland that are between 2,500 and 3,000 feet are called Corbett's, after the name of the man who, in fact, climbed them all, believe it or not. Not only did he climb all the Corbett's, but he climbed all the Monroe's too. Uh, he was apparently a, a Bristol district valuer and uh, an esteemed member of the Scottish Mountaineering Club. So there you are, that's wee Corbett. Uh, as you see, Ben and Lochan's quite a craggy wee hill. There's quite a sort of feeling of mountaineering about it. And if anyone was taking up hill walking as a, a hobby, mad fools that they are, and they'd maybe done some extensive low level walking or perhaps climbed fairly easy hills like uh, Ben Lomond, and they were now ready to try something a little more dramatic, and yet not too difficult really, not too long a walk, then Ben and Lochin is a, a possible choice. We've seen quite a few glacial features, and um, I think all that remains now is for us to find a way back down. I think the best thing is for us is to move on beyond the summit and go down fairly grassy slopes, quite easy slopes, down to Glen Moor on the other side of Ben and Lochin, and then onto the road and follow the road past round the rest and be thankful, past Little Loch Restall and back to the car. <laughs>